Hey, good morning and happy new year. All right, so today we are going to talk about uh, John the Baptist. How many of you guys know who John the Baptist is? Raise your hands. Yeah, if you're right, John the Baptist, how I like to explain it to to Kai, is that John the Baptist is Jesus' cousin. All right. Now, before we start, how many of you guys had a good Christmas? I know I did. And you had a good New Year? Now, with this new New Year, how many of you guys know what a rev uh, not a revolution, a resolution is? New Year's resolution. You guys probably have this puzzled look on your face. What is he talking about? All right. So to explain. A New Year's resolution is like a promise you make yourself every year. Now, some people make the promises big, small, you know, like I like I mentioned before in my previous video. And this actually relates into what we're going to talk about in the Bible. Now, this is a promise that John was trying to let people know who is coming. Now, if you can open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 3. And we're going to go ahead and read until 1 till 7. All right, let's start. Now it says, In those days John the Baptist came to, uh, to the Jordan wilderness and began preaching his message. He said, repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. Now, if you would look at John and you heard this message, you would probably think, should I take John very serious? I mean, look what he's wearing, look what he looks like. You know, John wasn't what you typically see around those days where people were wearing robes or, or just kind of finely dressed. No, John was very different, and it says it right here. John's clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. People from Jerusalem and from all of Judea and all over the Jordan Valley went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. See, it didn't matter what John looked like or what he ate or what you know he, he drank or, or any of that.
what was important was what was coming from John's mouth and his heart. And I'll say it again. He said, He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Tell me, what would you do if you heard somebody yelling that? By the way he looks? Would you think, this guy is kind of crazy? Or would you see the passion that he has in his voice and from his heart and overlook how he looks and look at what his heart looks like? Now, after he said that, we'll continue at 7. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch him baptize, he denounced them. You broad of snakes, he exclaimed, who warned you to flee God's coming wrath. <clears throat> he was talking about the Pharisees, and these were people that thought they knew God's law, and they were trying to do things not actually biblical. You see, John saw their hearts. And he told them the truth. So, what do you think? Alright. Now let's go ahead and fast forward to the, the, uh, the great part. This part is the baptism of Jesus. Now tell me, what would you do? How many of you guys have like a famous singer or a famous actor that is your favorite? That you just love to watch and that you just love to listen to or you want to meet sometime? How would you act? I know I met my favorite, one of my favorite football players when I was much younger. And I'll be quite honest, I was pretty starstruck. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh my gosh, it's, it's him, it's him, it's him. And when I met him, he was just a regular guy. But, this is different. The one that John was talking about was Jesus. Someone that he was waiting for. Waiting to meet. Now, Let's fast forward down to Matthew 13, and we will read all the way through 16. It says, Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to take talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John re agreed to baptize him. 
Isn't that amazing? Even though John felt like he was not worthy to baptize Jesus, Jesus told John that whatever his father requires, he will do. Because it is important to do the will of God. Let's continue. After his baptism, as Jesus came out of the water, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a loud voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Jesus was baptized by his cousin John the Baptist. John didn't feel like he was worthy. How many times do you guys feel like you're not worthy of... I don't know, anything that God gives us or just worthy of going to God because of how our life is. But we must remember that Jesus came down here for us. He wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you, and he wants a relationship with you. That is why Jesus got baptized. So he could do the will of God. All right, like I mentioned, you know about those promises, the New Year's resolution. Let's make the year 2021 a good year. And let's try our best every single day. Every single second. Every single minute. Every single hour. To try to do the will of God. We are not perfect. And that is why Jesus came. So when we do fall, we should immediately ask God for help. So how many of you guys can start the new year off right? Let's try. All right. Well, that was the, the story today. And let's start off the new year trying to do the will of God. And let's end it with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the new year, 2021, blessing us for this opportunity to see a new year. We know there's so many things going on in our lives, Lord, that can distract us. But Lord, I pray and ask if you can help lead us in these in the children in your will. Help us have these opportunities so we can meet people, so they can meet people, their friends, their loved ones, their, their, mo their mom, their dad, their grandparents, anyone. So they can see who you are. And why they choose to follow you. Thank you, Lord, for this message. Thank you for the children. We love you and we thank you and we praise you, Lord.